Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. I've built multiple dedicated NAS systems over the years, but with my recent internet upgrade, it was time to push my home network to the next level. Enter 10 gig networking and a full NAS rebuild. But getting the most out of this setup, well, it took some trial and error. This is actually my third dedicated NAS build. Before I had a dedicated NAS, I just had a simple network share in a multi-purpose box. No redundancy, no RAID, just a folder on a drive. Then came what I would consider my first real NAS. It was just a small little Atom 330 system with mirrored one terabyte drives. Later, I upgraded to an Atom D2550 system running at 1.86 gig, running a simple mirror four terabyte pair. That setup served me well for years and up until now even, but as my networking needs have grown, so have my NAS requirements. This little YouTube video making hobby that I started during COVID has produced a lot more data and video than I typically had before I started doing this. So I need a place to park and put all that. And I kind of work from the NAS for the most part when I'm making my videos and it gives me a place to keep all the raw stuff together and kind of organize for my different videos. I also like having a place with a decent amount of space to park a disc images. Like if I need to re-image a machine or if I just want to image it to back it up, if we're going to replace a kid's machine or one of the many things that I end up goofing off with here off and on, I'd like to have a place to store all that. And of course, we have a fair amount of media from older ripped DVDs and things. And I like for that to be available on the network to the various like Fire TVs or Google TV boxes we have around the house. From basic shared folders to mirrored drives and now onto more modular, higher speed setups, my NAS has evolved significantly. Now my newest NAS is powered by a very old ASUS E35M1 dash i deluxe board and it was slated to originally go in my existing 2u nas hence the small size but once i decided to go with hot swap base things took a bit of a turn and it does have one gig networking on board but to upgrade i installed a single 10 gig nic in the available one pcie slot it had hey it's jamie from the future here while i'm editing and i just want to make another point um what i'm going to point at here in a second is the main reason i got this board because to find something in this size, because I thought it was going to go in the other case originally, I wanted to find something in a mini ITX size that had at least four SATA 3 ports on it and the previously mentioned PCIe slot for a 10 gig card. Now, due to the age of this system, I didn't think I'd ever get like full 10 gig saturation or anything like that, especially with the discs I was going to use. But I knew this would probably be a huge step up from one gig. So what you'll see here is this was back in February of 2024. So that gives you an idea of how far behind I am on this project. I wanted to hook it up on the bench here and power it up and do some iPerf testing with this and another system to see if I could even get close to 10 gig. And that's what you'll see happening here in just a second. I was able to get pretty close to 10 gig. It didn't peg it out or anything, but that was substantially faster than anything else I'd ever had transferring on my network before. Now, of course, this test was just back to back with a test client. You can see I did it again and still got some pretty good numbers. This was just one stream. I maybe could have done a couple of parallel streams and gotten it a little higher, but I was pretty excited and glad to see it test pretty well like this. And you can see right here, I do a reverse test and have the other system send to me just one stream at a time. And you'll notice we're getting faster than one gig here, but we don't get the same speed that we were seeing in the other direction. Looks to be topping out about four. So that was interesting. Still, I wasn't super upset. I didn't know what kind of limitation it might be because of on the other machine, but this was still a lot faster than one gig. This was the first test I did way back last year that made me feel okay with moving forward with using the board. Now, I know some folks swear by off the shelf NAS units, and some of the things I did with this build, people will say it was a waste of money. Those units are great for plug and play setups, but for me, I think I'm going to get more bang for my buck here with the new case, hot swap drive insert, and a nice new power supply. And when it's done, I'll have a platform that lets me swap out motherboards and things, and this can probably last me for quite a while as I change drives and anything else. For my OS, I stuck with Zygma NAS. To understand where Zygma NAS comes from, we need to go back to the early 2000s and talk about a project called Monowall. It was one of the first embedded firewall solutions based on FreeBSD, built for small, efficient networking appliances. Over time, Monowall gave rise to several major projects. On the firewall side, Monowall directly led to PFSense, which became one of the most widely used open source firewall solutions. Later, PFSense itself was forked again, 
giving us OpenSense, a project that focused on open development and a modernized UI. But firewalls weren't the only thing Monowall inspired. In 2005, it was also the base for FreeNAS, one of the earliest open source NAS operating systems. Not everyone on the FreeNAS team agreed on the project's future. One of its main developers, Volker Thiel, wanted to switch from FreeBSD to Linux, but the rest of the team wasn't on board. So in 2009, he split off and created Open Media Vault, a Debian-based NAS OS that's still popular today. Meanwhile, FreeNAS continued under new leadership and was eventually acquired by IX Systems. They made major changes and in time rebranded FreeNAS as TrueNAS Core, keeping it FreeBSD-based. But the original FreeNAS developers weren't done yet. Since IX Systems now owned the FreeNAS name, they rebranded their project as NAS for Free. Later, they changed the name again to Zigma NAS, which continues development to this day. So from a simple FreeBSD firewall, we ended up with multiple powerful firewall and NAS systems, each evolving in its own way. With two gig fiber coming into my home, I knew my old network setup wasn't gonna cut it. While 2.5 gig and 5 gig options exist, I lean toward 10 gig because I was looking at getting off lease enterprise gear, and that's just kind of what I'm more comfortable messing with because of my day job. And when I had the original thoughts of adding some 10 gig capability to my network, I went with this 3560E 12 port 10 gig Cisco switch. And I was going to just combine it with my existing 1 gig access switch with the plans of connecting the firewalls, LAN side interfaces to it, and my workstation and the NAS. But at some point along the line, before I got a chance to do this, my original 1 gig access switch bit the dust. And so when I was looking at replacing it, I found this switch right here. And this is a 3650 48 port PoE switch but it has four 10 gig uplink ports. Four seems to give me enough of what I need. That covers the inside interface of my firewall, my main editing workstation, my NAS device when I'm done, and gives me an extra port left over. And instead of having two U taken up and more power, more noise, for now I just go back to having one U. And I do like the 3650 in this format because it's actually not as deep, so it gives me a little more room in my smaller rack. After a bit of work, the upgraded network is in place, but the real test comes after the NAS rebuild. Let's see what kind of speeds we can get. Beyond networking, this NAS got a complete overhaul. Choosing the right case was critical. I didn't have to have rack mount, but I wanted rack mount, so that just is what it is. And because of that, and because of limitations on my rack I'll show you here, it couldn't be any deeper than 16 inches. And I also needed three front accessible five and a quarter bays to fit this five by three and a half inch disc hot swap module that I wanted to get. I like the idea of this because if I needed to swap disc out, I wouldn't have to take the whole server out of the rack as I would today with my current system. One challenge I ran into was with the power supply. I mocked up a standard ATX power supply, but if you see here, it was kind of tight and I wanted to have a little more room for cabling and for airflow from behind that hot swap module. So I looked around and ended up going with the SFX power supply. It's 500 watts, but it's much smaller and it leaves a bit more breathing room. Initially, before I went down this whole road of a new case and everything, I had planned on using two eight terabyte drives that I got up at VCF Midwest a few years ago. But I realized these were like archive SMR drives, not ideal for daily NAS use due to their performance quirks. So then I found these two six terabyte helium field enterprise drives and I was going to set them up as a mirror pair and then have the eight terabyte archive drives as another RAID 1 pair and kind of work some kind of thing with that. But after messing around a bit, I ended up deciding to just get three more of those same six terabyte drives so I could have some options maybe with a RAID 10 or something like that. At least that was my initial thought. And these eight terabyte drives, I'll find another use for them or sell them to offset cost. As I mentioned before, for the operating system, I stuck with Zigma NAS, which I've used on previous NAS setups. While many people swear by TrueNAS, and I think it's great, I just personally don't need all that extra kitchen sink features that it has. I just want a super lean, dedicated file server. Zigma NAS fits that bill perfectly, 
and it runs from a RAM disk and boots from a USB stick with minimal config changes saved to an XML file on a writable portion of the drive. And let's be honest, I don't even think TrueNAS would run on this board I've got here. So after all was said and done, and a few experiments playing with RAID 1, then trying RAID 10, and I was always kind of scared of messing with ZFS, just probably because of one, I was unfamiliar with it, and two, I always read that you had to have ECC or something, or you just don't even bother with it. But I kind of found that that's not necessarily the case. Of course, ECC setups are, are the best, but this little system obviously doesn't have that. On a whim, I decided to give it a shot just to see if it would be more performant or less performant than the RAID 10 I had kind of messed with, which was not running as great as I thought it could. So what I ended up going with was this mirrored VDEV type pool thing in ZFS. And I may get some wording wrong here. Again, I'm very new with ZFS. This seemed to be kind of close to what a traditional RAID 10 would give me, but some of the awesome features that ZFS has. And then I had that other extra drive and I've just added it into ZFS as a hot spare. So it should just pop online should there be trouble with one of the other drives. I'm excited and happy to be playing with ZFS finally. This was as good a time as any to give it a shot, I guess. Now, I have all three NASs kind of still running and set up. You know, the two previous ones, I've told you their specs, and those are running at one gig. I think both of those probably have the older SATA 2. The oldest one may not even have SATA 2. We'll see here. But what I'm going to do, this is very simple, not scientific, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to drag the same file from my 10 gig workstation over to each one of those, and you'll see how long it takes when it's going over Windows via Samba or SMB or SIFS, whatever you're going to call it, file share and then how long it takes to copy it back. Let's see if this work was worth a difference in performance. After all of that, the result over 250 megabytes, not bits, megabytes per second over SMB. Not bad, but there's still room for improvement. So it's faster than a gig, but of course not 10 gig. So was it worth the upgrade? To me, absolutely. I've got a rock solid NAS, significantly faster speeds, and a setup that'll last me for years because I'm all set up now for future motherboard or drive upgrades in a very easy way. I'm looking forward to getting things migrated over to this new one and getting back to my normal data hoarding lifestyle. If you're curious how I upgraded my firewall to handle all this, check out the dedicated video on that link below. What's your home NAS setup like? Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.